Ava and I are going on a little adventure today. I'm hoping to go camping in the next week in the snow somewhere. And so I kind of wanted to scout out a location because I don't really, I haven't done any winter camping really here in Utah, especially without the camper trailer. Right now we're refinishing some stuff on the camper trailer so I don't really have it in a usable form right now. So we've got to uh, just get camp in the tent. So my wife and our baby won't be joining us, mostly for the baby. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go play around in the snow a little bit, try and find a spot to camp for next week. And I brought some ribs with me that I've been cooking in the sous vide. And we're gonna take those up the mountains, put them on the fire and finish them up. These might be my favorite ribs I've ever had. They're uh, from a book called Field Notes for Adventure. That's kind of the goal for right now. Just kind of have a relaxing evening up in the mountains and hopefully make it back before too late. And we probably have about an hour drive to where I want to go. Um, I've kind of picked out a spot above Heber City, but I don't even know if the road's going to be open or not. So I'm going to have to kind of go with the flow on that one. We just got to the spot that I had marked out on the map. Um, well, we almost got there, but the, there's a gate and it's closed for the winter. And I didn't really prepare to hike in tonight. I just have like some like grocery bags and some equipment and some food and some firewood. So that's not gonna work. So I'm trying to think of somewhere else to go. It might be hard to find a road that I can go on with my truck. Um, you know, I have four-wheel drive and everything, so I feel pretty comfortable, but uh, a lot of the roads are just closed. And that's kind of gonna be an issue, I think. I'd love to be able to do some snow camping, that's car camping, so I'll have to hike everything in. But uh, I'm kind of realizing that maybe that's not a reality. So we've now driven up the Mirror Lake Highway and again, I mean I knew there was a winter gate up here, I just wasn't sure where it was and also uh, if there would be any campgrounds open, you know, lightly plowed or at least driven in. But they've like blocked off every single campsite. It's kind of a bummer that it's so hard to find a place to go like drive down a snowy road. It's really hard to find. So I think what we're gonna have to do is just find a place on the side of the road here to pull off. And I might have to, you know, hike in a little bit to somewhere where we can make a little fire, cook dinner, and then head home. But I think this is definitely giving me some uh, ideas for camping next week. Probably means I'm gonna have to actually hike into a camp spot rather than be able to car camp like I wanted to. Because I wanna camp on the snow, but um, I was hoping that I'd be able to just pull my truck in, but I'm kind of struggling to find a spot. If any of you know of a spot to camp in the snow in my car, close, you know, within an hour and a half of, of Salt Lake, let me know. It is beautiful up here. It's been a great drive. And for those of you who know me, I love driving. I love getting up into the forest and driving around. That's kind of what I'm doing right now, so that's not so bad. Um, but yeah, hopefully... We can find a spot to make a little fire. I know there are some campgrounds along here, so what I'll probably do is uh, just pull off the side of the road near one of the campgrounds, walk into it. But yeah, we'll hike into a campground, have our little fire, and then get out of here. All right, I think we found a good enough spot anyway to pull off walk in you know 100 yards or so have a little fire cook dinner it's not ideal but uh, at least we'll get some food in us and we'll be able to get out of here pretty easy and get home before too late uh, so now we're gonna hike in all right well found a spot 
just off this little road. Normally this is like a road you can drive up, but they've plowed all the snow right in front of the road, so you can't really drive up it, but I was able to park right in front of it. And we hiked up the road probably, I don't know, two or 300 yards. Got off in the trees a little bit and uh, took one trip up with food and my camera and whatnot. But now we're gonna head back, grab a little bit of firewood, get back up there, get the fire started before it gets too dark. Sun's about to drop behind the mountain, but we should still have about 45 minutes to an hour of light, at least through twilight. Yeah, then we'll cook up some ribs, cook up some fried potatoes, and uh, then we'll maybe get a couple drone shots as the sun's going down. Go we'll head home. But we might come back to the same spot next week. Just hike in a bit and find a good place to camp. I think Ava will enjoy getting up here again. She's having a blast right now. Ava. Good. Good dog. Good dog. Okay, let's go. Okay, it's time to get a fire started for dinner. Luckily, I brought this um, Dura Flame fire start. These things are great. We get like a whole box of them for pretty cheap. And uh, we'll usually only break off like a quarter of it or so. But today, going a little bit more. Just since it's so cold out here, I just want to make sure we actually get a fire started. Ava, come. Come here. We got it going. I can feel the warmth off it. Just gotta get these coals going and then we'll throw our ribs on. I brought up a cast iron grate to throw over the top of the coals. And then um, I also brought up a cast iron pan to cook some potatoes in. But I'm gonna throw the drone up real quick before it gets too dark and then we'll uh, focus on dinner. out as good as I'd hoped because I didn't charge any of the batteries so I had like 30% on one of the batteries I could have checked the other ones but I'm pretty sure they were probably about the same and the controller battery was like 10% <laughs> okay so fires going just got to get some good coals going I uh, got the cast iron over there with it but now now we're going to cut up some potatoes just one potato I hope I brought it and um, we'll get it all prepped for the cast iron uh, skillet and start cooking those in some lard. All right, the potatoes are now frying in the lard and it actually smells really good. Once um, I have a little bit of time on that, then I'll get the uh, cast iron grate on there and we'll throw our ribs on so for the ribs 
I'll cut now to the recipe I used and how I prepped it at home and cooked it in the sous vide. And then when I was done with that, I just was able to bring it right out here and it's ready to basically just warm up over the over the fire and uh, get kind of browned up a bit. So we'll cut to that now. To make these ribs, you're going to include the following ingredients. A quarter cup of fermented black bean sauce. A quarter cup of sesame oil. Three tablespoons of soy sauce. Two tablespoons of honey. Three garlic cloves, grated or minced. Three sliced scallions. Two crushed chilies. I used Anaheim chilies, but you could use really any chili, like a Fresno chili. Two teaspoons of ground pepper. One teaspoon of grated ginger. And then the special ingredient is one spoonful of this habanero chili oil. You're going to put all of that into two separate Ziploc bags. I put one chili in each bag and then dumped half of the rest of the ingredients. Next, we're going to prepare our ribs. Make sure you remove the film from the back of the ribs. This will help your ribs be nice and tender and soak up all of the other ingredients. You'll put half a rack in each of the bags. Next, you'll bring out your sous vide container. Submerge the ribs with the bag in the water to get all the air out and then seal the bags up. This will help the ribs stay down in the water while they cook. And then I use these little clips to keep them on the side of the container and not float up as much. Next, get out your sous vide. You'll set it to 165 degrees for four to five hours. I did five hours. To finish off these ribs, you will put them over the fire and crisp them up. All right, food is done. I just took the little grill off of the fire, um, just heating the potatoes up once more because they got done a little earlier than I expected. So heating those up, left the ribs right here next to them, just to heat up a little bit. And I think everything's about ready. So we're going to pull it off. I just seasoned it with salt and pepper. We should be good to eat. Alright guys, it doesn't get much better than this. You got your dog, you got a fire, you're in. A great place. We got ribs back here, some fried potatoes right here. It looks delicious. Turns out, it tastes delicious too. I'm gonna eat this dinner before this fire goes out, and then we'll get out of here. That was successful, but um, not what we were planning, but still turned into a success, which I'm really happy about. Also, this fire is great. So, I'm going to eat up real quick, and we'll get out of here. These are honestly the perfect rib. They're not so overcooked that the bone just like slips right out. While those are tasty and good, that's not what a rib is actually supposed to be. Contrary to what um, chilies and applebees will tell you. You should be able to bite the, bone, the meat off the bone a little bit. It should be tender, juicy. And I've never had a juicier rib a tastier rib and uh, the char on the outside from the fire is just absolutely perfect it's it's the perfect rib and the fried potatoes I'm gonna start cooking everything 
and lard, I think, because they were so good and crispy. Ava wants more, huh? Finished up dinner, cleaned up. Ava's ready to go home, but she had some tasty ribs she loved. Uh, full moon tonight. I don't really even need a headlamp, but it's kind of nice walking back. Ava's pretty happy. We might come back up here next week, unless I can figure out a different spot. But hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, um, subscribe to our channel. We're really, really close to a thousand subscribers. It's kind of cool. Pretty pumped on that. Uh, also, like this video. It helps out, as always. Um, comment if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions. Uh, love to hear everybody's thoughts. We'll talk to you guys soon, and we'll see you next week.